In this episode, I'll show you how I turned my Figma sketches into 3D in Unity. From this to this. I'm a UX UI designer who recently began learning how to develop games. Through this channel, I hope to inspire you to do the same. Subscribe to follow this journey and learn from my mistakes. Now, let's go. After finishing the Tiny Pirates game shown in the previous episode, where I learned some fundamentals, I was ready to tackle my hex game. My first task was to create the basic hex tile in 3D. To keep things simple, I used Unity's built-in modeling tool, ProBuilder, to do this. I snapped the hex vertices into the exact 8x8 dimensions I defined for the hexes in my Figma sketch. For all objects as we advance, I aim to use only one material I can tint to any color to simplify my process. Trying to mimic the transparent gradient was really tricky and also a logical mistake, but more on that in a second. With the basic hex tile in place, my next step was to dive into code to establish logic for making the grid. My partner Filla hinted me of a fantastic page explaining the hex shape and various grid algorithms. Regardless, and to clarify, this part was a real challenge for me to wrap my head around. I modeled a few more tiles, including a railroad and the start and end tiles. My next move was to add the cards seen from my early Figma sketches to enable a way to place these different tiles on the grid. This implied a deep dive for me into Unity's new UI system called UI Toolkit, which closely resembles HTML and CSS, which I have some experience with. I structured my card data into something called scriptable objects, making it easy to add new cards where I only need to fill in the necessary data to populate the cards dynamically. Then I spent a day or two in chaos when I realized looking back on a previous version of my project was not as easy as it is in Figma as an example. Unity's built-in version control is not my friend and I switched to using GitHub instead in hope that that will work a little bit more stable for me. Until now my grid had predefined coordinates with a fixed max size. That could work, but I figured this limitation would annoy me, so instead I refactored this logic so I could only create coordinates where needed, with the effect that the map theoretically could grow infinitely. Next I coded, or to be fair, ChatGPT coded at least most of it, the logic for knowing which coordinates on the grid are available to place a new tile. Uh, this also led me to add a visual representation of available coordinates and hovering functionality. This is where I learned about a convenient plugin, DoTween, that I will use from now on whenever I need tweening. With a hex grid that could now grow, I explored camera handling since I needed the camera to adjust to my current grid size automatically. So I started with one camera and tried to script the necessary behavior, which became quite messy. Instead, I learned of a different camera setup called Cinemachine, where you can get some tricky logic out of the box. When placing tiles, I wanted them to sort of slide up from the fog. And it was at this moment I realized that my gradient wouldn't work. So instead I found a way to add an object that covers the entire grid and behaves like this fog. I should also mention that until now I have been using orthographic cameras to mimic my Figma sketches. However, the fog and the camera handling became more straightforward if I used perspective cameras instead. And it felt quite refreshing to see more angles. Then I spent a few hours just enjoying selecting cards and growing my hex grid. Beautiful. After this, it was time to add a farmland tile and a wheat counter in the corner. Connected with some code, I triggered the counter uh, each time a wheat crop popped up from the soil. This made me so happy and satisfied. It was like if I created the first sign of life. And talking about life, it's now time to add villagers. But more on that in the next episode. Hope to see you around.